He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Good morning. This is Daily Devotions from Grace Lutheran Church in New Albany, Indiana. And this is Pastor Bruce Kishnick. And it is Easter Monday. And so our devotional title today is The Day After. I want to read to you from Luke 24, starting in verse 36. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they still did not believe it because of joy and amazement, he asked them, Do you have anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in their presence. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the Law of Moses, the Prophets, and the Psalms. Super Bowl Monday is widely known to be the least productive day in America. Uh, with all of the festivities, the eating and the drinking that takes place on that day, that next day people just aren't up to stuff. Except for a few people who get to celebrate another Tom Brady victory, uh, the rest of them are sort of tired and surly and dispirited. And even the people that celebrate the victory are usually pretty groggy that next day. They eat too much, they drink too much, they stay up too late, and so they're not up to par come that next day. The day after is often a letdown. Let's say that you throw a party. You have that big build up, you go out and you buy food and drink and decorations, and on the day when the party starts, you're busy taking care of and making sure of the comfort and the enjoyment of all of your guests. And, and the next thing you know, it's over. And there you are. That next morning when you get up, you're tired, braggy, because you stayed up into the wee hours cleaning everything up, or you entertain your guests into the wee hours and you left everything to clean up that next day. And so there it is. Your spirits are about the same as your pretty helium balloons hovering somewhere between the ceiling and the floor. The day after is often a letdown. How do you think the disciples were the day after Easter? A little dazed? A little befuddled? Yeah, I suspect. When they woke up, if they slept at all, it must have seemed to them like it had been a dream. Jesus is alive, right? We saw what we saw, right? We heard what we heard, right? Jesus is alive, I guess. But what does it mean? What does it matter? They must have wondered. The day after is often a letdown. And then Thomas comes home. He walks in and says, what's, it, what's the buzz? And they all say, we have seen the Lord. And he goes, yeah, sure. And so they tell him all the details. They tell him what Jesus looked like. They tell him what Jesus said. They tell him what Jesus did. And the whole time, Thomas is like this with a skeptic's face. And then he says, I do not believe it, he barks. Unless I see the hands and his feet, unless I put my finger into the nail marks, put my hand into his side, I will not believe it. Why should he? It's the day after Easter. He didn't see anything, touch anything, or hear anything. The day after is often a letdown. The next Sunday then, when Jesus returns to them, do you think he's coming just for Thomas? I doubt it. I think they all need another dose of the new reality. I think they all need to see Jesus again. They need to hear him. See, Jesus really, really lives. Make no mistake. 
the disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. And this time, Thomas got to have that joy too. But it's going to take several more visits by the resurrected Christ and a big outpouring of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost before these men really get it. Before these men no longer have a day after that's a letdown for them. How about you today? It's Easter Monday. We had a big celebration yesterday. While we did it at a distance, we were all united in our worship and our praise of Jesus. We all, we all talked about and lauded and celebrated the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ. But is Easter Monday a letdown for you? I hope not. I hope it isn't. Because you and I have so many advantages over the disciples. They only had the Old Testament looked at. We've got the Old Testament. We've got the entire New Testament that teaches us all about the resurrection. That teaches us all about Jesus. We have a New Testament that makes us eyewitnesses of Jesus' birth, his life, his ministry, his teaching, of his passion, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. We had that singular advantage over them because we knew Jesus was going to come alive out of that tomb yesterday. We knew that Jesus was going to greet those women, that he was going to walk the road to Emmaus, that he was going to show up in that upper room last night. We knew it because we've got the scriptures that tell us that. We know all these things that they didn't know. And so for us, every Sunday is a celebration of the resurrection. Every Sunday is an opportunity to be reminded that Jesus Christ lives and because he lives, we will live also. Every Sunday is an opportunity to make a witness to the world that we believe Jesus Christ lives, that Jesus Christ really and truly was dead, and that he really and truly came alive out of that tomb on Easter morning, and that because he lives, we will live also. No day after blues for you and me. We can truly celebrate Easter every single day of our lives. Jesus lives and we live in him. Jesus said it, we believe it, and so it must be so. Amen. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Our heavenly and gracious God as we come before you this morning. We give you thanks for the celebration of Easter that we had yesterday. But we thank you, Father, that Easter isn't just a one-day event that it is something that gives us blessing and gives us joy every single day of our lives. It's something we celebrate every single Sunday, a little Easter, to be reminded that because Jesus died and rose again, we also have life in his name. Father, we pray your blessing upon those who have been bereaved in these last week. We pray for those that are stricken with illness. We pray, Father, that you protect those that are the most vulnerable. We pray for our shut-ins, our elderly folks, for those who have underlying conditions. And we pray, Lord, that you'd continue to pass this thing over us, that we might soon celebrate together again the celebration of our Savior Jesus Christ's resurrection. We ask for your blessing. We give you thanks and praise for all your gifts, and most especially for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, and his glorious resurrection. In his name we pray. Amen. So, got a number of announcements I want to make today. Number one, remind you that you can join us all this week for daily devotions, Monday through Friday. On Saturday, we'll have our weekly review. And on this coming Sunday, we will once again celebrate the resurrection at 8 o'clock and 1030. See, we get to celebrate Christmas season for 12 days, the 12 days of Christmas. We celebrate Easter season for six weeks. So 12 days for Christmas, six weeks for Easter. I'll let you do the math. Which one of those is the one that means the most to us? Um, as you may have heard in our prayers yesterday morning, we received news this weekend that Reverend Parker Knoll had died of complications from COVID-19 up in Indianapolis. Pastor Knoll was the pastor at Concordia from 1988 to 1995. So he was there just ahead of Pastor Peters. Uh, he was a good friend, and we're going to miss him. I also want to make a shout out to someone named Maureen Lacerra. 
She's the daughter-in-law of Cindy and Bill Wirth. She's the director of emergency room nursing services at Tallahassee General Hospital down in Florida. And uh, she's right there on the front lines in the emergency room. Um, also want to make a shout out to all of my eighth grade confirmands. They all have their personal statements ready and now we have to wait. We have to wait and see. We hope in May we can do all these things, but only time will tell. So in the meantime, I want to say hi to Rachel Wilcox and to Leah Walden. I want to say hi to Aiden Olson and Aiden, I, I got your statement. It's We're good to go. Um, I want to say hi to Lillian Nearman and to Caleb Corner, to my granddaughter Willow Kishnick, and to Carolyn Hadley, Emily Garber, Carson Evans, and Mary Alexander. Hang in there, guys. We're going to get you confirmed sometime real soon. So God be with you all. And then finally, to all of our junior high and senior high youth. Guys, there's a packet coming to you in the mail. And the return address on there will probably say something about Rose or Sean Ebling and an address of 5801 Hartford Lane, Charlestown. If you get a packet about this big and it has that address on there, open it up because it's for you. It's a packet that Rose Ebling and Wendy Shevlin put together and mailed out to you. So it should come sometime in this week. Open it up and enjoy everything that they put in there. So that's it for today. Join us again tomorrow morning for daily devotions. And God be with and bless each of you. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.